In this presentation, we'll explore the recipients of the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics and examine why they received this honor, with a comprehensive explanation of their work. However, before we delve into those details, it's essential to grasp these fundamental concepts first. An electron manifests as a distribution of probabilities known as a probability cloud. This cloud can assume various configurations based on the electron's energy state. Researchers characterize each configuration using what is known as a wave function. Each distinct configuration corresponds to its own unique wave function. Now let's begin our exploration. Consider your surroundings. Every object you observe consists of atoms. Electrons orbit around each atom. Now picture employing a specialized particle detection device to locate one of these electrons somewhere in the universe. Upon detection, what appears seems straightforward, merely a minuscule luminous point on the display. That's our typical conception of an electron's appearance. Yet here lies the peculiar reality. It manifests this way solely because we've performed a measurement. The instant we observe the electron, it assumes that precise particle-like appearance. Prior to detection, however, it represents something entirely different. It doesn't resemble a point or sphere whatsoever. Rather, it manifests as a distribution of potential outcomes. It appears more like an indistinct wisp of vapor distributed throughout space. This is what researchers refer to as a probability cloud. It constitutes a mathematical representation that indicates the likelihood of locating the electron in various positions. However, many researchers consider this more than mere mathematical abstraction. This cloud may possess physical reality, representing the electron's actual state before observation occurs. What proves even more intriguing is that this cloud isn't vacant or hypothetical. It possesses the electron's charge, energy, and mass. Despite lacking a definite shape or edge, the moment we conduct a measurement, something remarkable occurs. All those potential outcomes collapse or converge into a singular result. The dispersed cloud abruptly concentrates into a single location. That's when an electron materializes in physical reality, the microscopic point we observe on the detection device. As we understand, electrons exhibit wave-like probability behavior before observation takes place. Therefore, let's conceptualize an electron strictly as a wave, rather than a minuscule particle. Atoms are described as possessing various energy levels surrounding them. Electrons are frequently portrayed as inhabiting these levels. However, in actuality, no tangible layers or shells hover around the atom. These energy levels actually represent different configurations in which the electron's probability wave, termed the wave function, distributes itself around the nucleus. Consider the hydrogen atom as our example. In its minimum energy state, or ground state, the electron's wave extends smoothly in a spherical distribution around the nucleus, resembling a gentle luminous haze centered upon it. When the electron gains energy, something noteworthy transpires. Its wave doesn't transform into a faster-moving particle. Instead, the entire cloud expands and transforms its configuration. The new, larger cloud signifies the electron in an elevated energy state. Between these states exist thin, imperceptible regions called nodes, where the probability of detecting the electron plummets to nearly zero. You can visualize them as vacant spaces between distinct standing wave configurations, comparable to the silent points on a resonating guitar string. Should the electron acquire additional energy, its wave configuration grows increasingly intricate. The cloud might elongate and develop lobes resembling a three-dimensional blossom with petals extending in various directions. These are designated as p-orbitals, for instance, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Each one assumes a different spatial orientation. So when researchers discuss electrons transitioning between energy levels, they're not describing particles leaping from one orbit to another. What actually transpires is that the electron's wave configuration changes shape. It restructures itself into a new stable configuration that perfectly corresponds to the atom's potential field. Having established this foundation, we now comprehend the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. Let's now investigate a captivating phenomenon termed quantum tunneling. Envision the electron in a hydrogen atom. In a stable state, its probability cloud maintains a roughly spherical shape centered around the nucleus. This cloud remains confined nearby through the electrostatic attraction between the negatively charged electron and the positively charged nucleus. Researchers often conceptualize the binding force between the nucleus and electron as a type of barrier, called a potential barrier. Now observe this. This graph displays the probability of locating the electron in a hydrogen atom's ground state, where its probability cloud maintains spherical symmetry. 
you can observe that the probability of finding an electron progressively diminishes as distance from the center increases. However, here's the fascinating aspect. When we position this probability wave within a potential barrier, you'll observe that at the barrier's boundary, the wave doesn't abruptly fall to zero. Instead, it marginally extends beyond the barrier, indicating there remains a slight probability of detecting the electron outside the barrier. This appears counterintuitive because the electron lacks sufficient energy to cross the barrier according to classical physics principles. Nevertheless, in a genuinely quantum manner, the electron's wave penetrates through the barrier. This unusual yet authentic effect is what researchers call quantum tunneling. Researchers harness this peculiar quantum effect to extract electrons from atoms without providing them the complete energy required to overcome the barrier. Here's their methodology. They generate a powerful electric field on one side of the atom. Typically, the nucleus occupies the center, while the electron's probability cloud distributes uniformly around it. However, once the electric field activates, the negative electron cloud experiences a pull slightly toward the positive side of the field, while the massive positively charged nucleus shifts minimally in the opposing direction. This causes the atom to become slightly tilted or polarized. One side now exhibits a denser electron cloud, while the opposite side shows a more diffuse one. Due to this distortion, the potential energy landscape of the atom, what researchers term the potential barrier, becomes asymmetrical. On the side where the electron cloud experiences the pull, the barrier becomes narrower and reduced in height. The electron's wave function, which ordinarily diminishes smoothly at the boundaries, now extends somewhat farther in that direction, reaching into the region beyond the barrier. Through this mechanism, a portion of the electron's probability cloud leaks outward, despite the electron lacking sufficient energy to escape classically. Now, let's discuss the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics and examine how researchers transformed quantum tunneling into practical applications, including its utilization in constructing quantum computers. The prize was distributed among John Clark, Michael H. Deverett, and John M. Martinis, who proved that quantum effects aren't confined to minuscule particles, but can also manifest in larger, meticulously designed systems. Their actual achievement involved using a miniature device called a Josephson junction in superconducting circuits. This junction is fabricated by positioning an extremely thin insulating layer between two superconductors. Ordinarily, an insulator would prevent the passage of electrons. However, in a superconductor, electrons combine into pairs termed Cooper pairs. All these pairs collectively function as a single coherent quantum wave, analogous to the probability cloud of an electron surrounding an atom. This quantum wave can actually tunnel through the thin insulating barrier. This represents the identical phenomenon we observe in atomic tunneling, where an electron's probability cloud can extend beyond the binding force of the nucleus or the potential barrier. Within the Josephson junction, the superconducting wave exists in a type of potential well comparable to the probability cloud confined by the nucleus in an atom. Here, the potential barrier is established by the thin insulating layer. The quantum wave in the junction can also assume different configurations when it acquires energy just like the various configurations of an electron's probability cloud around an atom. As we've already established, due to quantum mechanics, the wave can only inhabit specific energy levels or configurations within this potential barrier. In the minimum energy state, the wave remains compact and predominantly inside the barrier with only a minuscule portion penetrating into the walls. Therefore, the tunneling probability remains very minimal. In elevated energy states, the wave extends further and more of it approaches the barrier, increasing the likelihood of tunneling. Researchers can determine which energy state or configuration the quantum wave inhabits by administering microwave pulses with the precise energy necessary to transition it from one level to another. When the wave absorbs this energy, its configuration transforms and it occupies an elevated energy level. In this new state, the wave extends further into the barrier making tunneling more probable. By regulating the energy states and monitoring the tunneling behavior, researchers can manipulate the quantum state of the superconducting circuit. This capability to control tunneling and energy levels is what enables Josephson junctions to operate as quantum bits, or qubits, in quantum computers. The minimum energy state can signify zero while the subsequent energy state can signify one. Because the wave can exist in a superposition of states, it can simultaneously represent both zero and one. 
Researchers employ microwaves to transition the wave between these states and interpret the tunneling behavior to ascertain which state the qubit occupies. This is how tunneling in Josephson junctions is utilized to store, manipulate, and retrieve quantum information, establishing the foundation of contemporary superconducting quantum computers. The three researchers received the Nobel Prize for constructing these specialized circuits. These circuits enable electric current to exhibit unusual quantum behaviors. They demonstrated that even a circuit composed of millions of electrons, large enough to be observed or manipulated, can still display quantum tunneling, a phenomenon previously believed to exist exclusively in the microscopic realm. Their experiments verified that such circuits can absorb and release energy in fixed, discrete quantities precisely as genuine atoms do. By regulating these effects, they succeeded in creating artificial atoms, human-engineered versions of nature's fundamental components. These artificial atoms are now employed to construct quantum computers, extremely sensitive sensors, and other sophisticated quantum technologies that may revolutionize the future. This concludes our presentation. We hope you found it engaging, and please remember to share your thoughts about this discovery.